Hi, I'm Pam Holt. How are you? Today is an exciting day. It's actually day two of a very special week. This week is the launch of the Hospitable Host Collaborative Book Project. I'm so excited to be a part of this with 40 of my closest friends now uh, who are all hosts from all over the world. Uh, they have come together to tell their inspiring stories of how they get started and how they run their businesses. So if you're interested, and you should be, uh, you can pick up a copy of your own on uh, Amazon, amazon.com. We're right there. We're trending at number one after just one day of being on, uh, being available in the U.S. at least. Uh, we are right up there in several different categories, um, and so you'll find us. I'm chapter 24. I'm excited to get reading and, uh, and read all the insights that all these other fabulous hosts have to offer. Uh, but beyond that, today I'm going to be joined by one of the authors here, uh, Dr. Rachel Gainsborough. I'm going to try to find her because I couldn't find her before. Let me see if I can bring her on to tell us about her chapter. Okay, so, oh, there she is. Hey there. <laughs> Hello, this is only my second one, so I'm a oh. little bit <laughs> No, that's rusty. okay, that's okay. We've changed some of the ways that you access this, and it's much more difficult for me to find people when I'm trying to bring them on live. So it's probably not you. Let's just blame it on them. Well, it's kudos nice to, to you, though. You. That's awesome that you figured it out. So. Oh, no, you know, I, I just I just go for it. I'm like, I don't know. Hopefully it'll work. If it doesn't, we'll try something else. But I'm really excited to meet you, excited to talk with you. Super excited about ah! this. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank so start you. From the beginning. What does it feel like to be a best-selling author? Ah! <laughs> Gosh. I mean, it is absolutely incredible. It's my very first book. First of all, to be a published author, I was really excited about that. And to be a best selling author, international best selling author, it's absolutely incredible. I'm still kind of reeling trying to figure out what it all means. And so, I just know. really excited. Really Isn't it crazy. Cool. I, yeah. I heard some one of the authors say that uh, we were number one within like two minutes of launching uh, in, I think, Australia. And so yeah. that's insane. And yeah. it keeps getting better uh, as mm -hmm. we progress around the globe. And, uh, and really, this is the beginning. It's, it's literally been, what, 26 hours that we've been on the market uh, globally. Yeah. And uh, and it's 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 fantastic. So I want to hear how you got involved with the book. I want to hear just a tiny bit about what you wrote in your chapter, but we'll save that for later. But I mostly <laughs> want to hear how you got started in this business because I find the origin stories to be just fantastically interesting. So take it away. <laughs> All right. Well, first of all, Pat, I just wanted to thank you for. Um, putting this content out there. So many of us who are hosts, we didn't have this when we were first getting started. And so Tell me about it. value, right? And, yes. and just the value, you know, that you put out there. I'm so grateful for it. And so for everyone who's listening, definitely um, tap a few friends on the shoulder, have them jump in on this because, right. you know, the other operators in the uh, arena who are just getting started and who will find value from being a part of this community. And so, first of all, just wanted to give you that gratitude because it takes time, it takes energy and thought. And I so appreciate you you putting oh, all of that out there. That's nice of you to say. I feel so strongly that uh, that I want, and I know you do the same. I want to share what I know because when you get started, uh, you know it can feel kind of lonely, yeah. and uh, and frankly, you can make a lot of missteps. And okay. there's no reason because there's uh, you know you can tap into communities like yours like mine, you can reach out and find someone to help you and you don't have to do it alone and you can keep your money in your pocket and, yeah. uh, and you can build a business hosting that, that works for you and that you love. So <laughs> yeah, back to you, I wanna hear your story. Awesome, awesome. Oh my goodness, I see Jody just joined. Hey Jody. <laughs> and Jody thanks for that, Jody. Jody, I'm so hero. excited. Well, um, so initially I was working in healthcare, just kind of, you know, doing my thing. It just became a 
bit of a grind. So I was grinding it out. And so initially I was thinking to myself, okay, what can I do that I enjoy that would light me up that would um, provide an extra revenue stream. And it came from a place of, you know, having gone through a school, got my doctorate, paid off a whole lot of student loans. And the next step was to, well, you know what, we want to invest, what would we invest in? And I was not working really into short term rentals or be becoming a host per se, initially okay. for some type of investment. And so I looked around, um, Bitcoin was a big deal back then. Yeah. It was just coming on the scene. I didn't quite understand it. So I said, you know what, I don't understand this. It seems hot. And it seems like it's promising, but I still didn't understand it. So I said, you know what, let me stick to what I understand. And that was real estate. And it's, you can see it. It's real. It's a house. You can touch it. So that I get. And so when I decided to um, go into real estate, there are so many approaches, whether it's wholesaling, uh, right. syndication, multifamily, long-term landlord. And for one reason or another, whether it's a lot of time capital being spent doing that, or whether it is you know, a lot of initial revenue, I determined, you know what, um, these were not for me. When mm -hmm. I looked at the long term landlord, it didn't seem like a big time commitment, but it did seem like it was going to take forever for me to build up a saving mm -hmm. that I could then, you know, deploy for kids colleges and all of that. Because up right. until Point. I mean, we had not saved anything for our kids college. We had really no savings. We, we really, we walked away from graduate school with half a million dollars of student loans. We're working three or four jobs in healthcare trying to pay it off. And so when that was paid off, we really thought to ourselves, okay, we don't want to mess this up. We want to invest in something that's going to give us back. So very significant returns okay. and so we landed on short-term rentals and what I didn't know at the time and what I didn't fully understand is not only is it a real estate investment business potentially but it's also a hospitality business yeah so that's the big difference and uh, started there I purchased a home uh, within our own uh, area and being the numbers and spreadsheets girl I niche to the luxury space I thought to okay. myself if I were to um, operate 10 or 20 of these, again, that's me trading off my time, right? I wanted to only invest in one or two wildly profitable properties that would generate the revenue of maybe three or four. And so I focused on luxury. And so okay. uh, after hitting our head against the wall with some uh, I would say bargain properties that we were looking at and we realized, okay, this is going to be more uh, outside of our area of expertise. We landed on luxury and we haven't looked back since. Wow, that's fantastic. Um, and so you didn't have any experience with, uh, with hosting or, or investing at all before you just started? I did not. I did not. I, I consumed like two hours of po two two years worth of podcasts. So I was just yeah. consuming that. And so okay. I, I did start to learn a little bit more professionally from other coaches after, you know, we launched our first property. So we, we launched it and then we realized, wow, this is cool. We want to do it better at a higher level. And that's when we enrolled into coaching. I see. Okay, great. That's a that's a great thing to do. So, <laughs> so when you say luxury, what what do you mean? What do you, what constitutes luxury in your area? Where are you you're in uh, Georgia? In Georgia, yes. Okay. Georgia. We also invest in Pennsylvania, in the Florida Panhandle, um, in Tennessee as well. And so, luxury. If we just want to look at it from a price point perspective, just to start off there. And I don't want to discourage anyone, but luxury really, modern luxury is very different from traditional luxury. And we can tap into that in a moment. But if we want to look at it globally, you know, if you're going to rent out your extra bedroom in your home for $30 a night, well, we know that that we can't market that as a luxury stay, right? So it's going to be a higher price point for sure. I don't want to say it's XYZ price point because markets are different. It depends so on the market. I say it's $600 a night. In California, well, that may not be impressive, but in rural Georgia, that's quite, you know. <laughs> that's, that's up there, impressive. huh? 
So each, it's regionally um, based, and it's going to be typically 30% or so higher a nightly rate for that particular market than the uh, standard uh, ac accommodations. So in Georgia, uh, we the luxury homes that are in um, a little bit of a higher end, higher cost of living area, they're anywhere from, I want to say $800 a night to $2,800 a night. Oh, fantastic. So that is much higher price point. And um, yeah, I can say that um, I can see that all throughout the different regions, but we do have a 13 bedroom that's, um, you know, eight or nine K per night starting. So, but that's a bedroom. Wow. Yeah. And so I do like the larger homes. Five to eight is my bread and butter primarily because it takes the same amount of work to get a five to eight bedroom done up that as it would a three to four bedroom but then the revenue um is significant, significant. okay so so start at the beginning you purchase your properties for the most part yeah. okay i own okay. owned um a good majority of the portfolio i am leasing two properties right okay. now and then we co-host for other investors who are looking to invest in our same location where we have the systems and if it's a property that's of interest to me, I will co-host with another uh, investor. Okay, before we get to what the co-host part looks like, um, how do you go about making a decision about a property? How do you evaluate it without getting into a lot of the numbers and the details right now because we won't have time. Sadly, maybe we'll do that another time. But what are you kind of generally looking for when you're doing kind of your first run through uh, on a property? Yeah, that's a great question. And you're right to say we wouldn't be able to get into numbers. It would take right. me probably four hours to walk you through my entire process. I'm a spreadsheet girl. But you're gonna, I like five to eight bedrooms, like I said, number of bedrooms. When I am looking in a particular market, whether it's a vacation rental market or a suburban market, I'm going to look at regulations. That's going to mm -hmm. already include anything from right. happening if the regulations do not support it. The next thing is curb appeal for me. Curb appeal has to be there, you know, curb yeah. appeal has to be there. I'm not looking to do a major renovation project. So if the home is in pretty decent shape and I can add some lipstick, you know, change out some appliances, uh, um, change surfaces to natural surfaces and flooring, I, I am pet friendly in 90% of our properties. So flooring is very important to me. I'm not a big carpet girl at all. Okay. Um, so those are the things that I'm looking to change. I'm not necessarily, um, I, I don't have the bandwidth nor the skill set for huge gut jobs or anything like that. So I'm not looking to project manage um, huge projects. Okay, so okay. So you said a, a bunch of really important things uh, all at once. So let me just slow down a little bit. Uh, one, the, the fact that you're pet friendly, I think is really important because a lot of hosts, especially new hosts, um, their first impression is pet friendly, I, I'm not doing that. But yeah. pet friendly listings get booked more often and for higher prices. Um, and there are ways that you can protect the property as well as, um, you know, um, you can sort of verify your guest and have a kind of a conversation to kind of vet them and see if, uh, if they're the kind of pet owner that you want to have with you. Also, yeah, I don't start off pet friendly either. So I understand their um, yeah. hesitation. So I learned quickly that I was leaving a lot of money in, on the table. When eight or nine guests back to at back asked you if you're pet friendly, you said no, 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 no. But then you have to take a step back and say, wait a minute, there's a yeah. trend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you do. And you have to kind of, you know, you have to analyze your fear, I think. You're like, what am I so concerned about? What do I think is going to happen? You know, I have a pet and I wasn't <laughs> pet friendly for a long time. So I like, three what? pets. <laughs> you know, you really got a lot of nerve here, you know. So, so I, I thought it through and I stepped back and I was like, yeah, what is the worst that can happen? First of all, yeah. I've got you know, a million dollar coverage. So, you yeah. know, a lot of bad pet things could happen before I would really feel that uh, outside of that million dollars. So you said that, you also said curb appeal. And so I think that's really important for people to be able to, to analyze kind of what is gonna be that look that people will will stop scrolling through, you know, the, the various platforms, the Airbnb, the Verbo, and take a look at that property based on a, a photo. So you have to kind of think, you know, what's what's trending now? What do, what do people want? What is my ideal guest? What kind of place do they want to stay in? So I, I thought those were some important points that, that I want new hosts to hear when they're considering new property. Okay. All right. So you got, you 
and you've got kind of a general idea of what you want in a property. You also mentioned five to eight bedrooms. I just have to say in my market in Chicago, I mean, that's a whole neighborhood that that's, I don't know if I've ever even seen uh, maybe a couple houses that were that big here in the city. So it's fascinating to hear uh, you say that. When you have a space that's five to eight bedrooms, you rent the entire space? You're not renting individual rooms, I assume. No, no, that wouldn't be, um, that would not really accommodate your luxury avatar guests. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, you do rent the entire space, but I've seen it. Um, done very well when individuals who are operators who are, are accommodating say the co-living avatar uh mm. they do that you know there's nice. a great way to do that as well where they're renting it room by room but no we we rent the entire space we we wouldn't uh allow our guests to share spaces okay. um, yeah. so you're looking at uh families i assume as as the avatar yeah, so my ideal uh, avatar is large, multi-generational families traveling with children and pets. So meaning me, my husband, his spouses, his siblings, their spouses, my siblings, their spouses, grandma, grandpa. Grandma. Mm -hmm. That's why I love this avatar because what I just said there, you can count perhaps uh, about four or five paying adult units. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So let's exactly. split that risk. So I, at first, you know, I'm a little girl from Haiti. I'm cringing at $800 a night, $1,000 a night. That's insane. But if you split that up amongst right. four or five adult units, mm -hmm. I mean, not bad at all, right? And okay. it's still better accommodations than, you know, getting cooped up in a hotel. Or, yeah. I mean, you, you, you presumably have a kitchen. You may have some oh, outdoor yeah. space. You're not paying for parking uh, in Chicago. If you're at any hotel, it's at least $50 a night just to park one car. So exactly. if you've got four families coming together and you're trying to park four cars, well, you know, do the math. When you have a big uh, nightly rate, really think about, think about what it would be if everybody had to get their own separate accommodations. Don't be afraid of a high price. That's what I say. Exactly. Okay, so when you talk about co-hosting, how does that look for the people that you um, provide that service? So the, your network is your net worth, right? And so becoming a household name with the realtors that I interact with, the investors that I interact with, whether it's at Aria, uh, they identify me as the luxury short-term rental girl, you know? Okay. And so if they are looking to purchase in a particular area and say they're um, skill set is not in the hosting. They don't want to necessarily uh, right. interact with the guests or, you know, have those conversations multiple times a day, answering the same questions over and over again. Um, they ask me, hey, would you be able to help me with something like this? So a lot of times it's people you know, like, and trust. You know, my realtors refer me all the time because they know what it is that I do. And I'm going to be honest, um, I initially would interact with a realtor. My husband would be showing them, hey, look at what she's doing with this. Look at what she, he's like so proud, you know? And he's like my ride or die. Yeah. Don't, That's nice. Yeah, and I'm like, don't tell them what I'm doing. Cause I, I don't know if it's a, I don't want people to know my business type of thing is how I started. I was like, Shh, don't <laughs> Oh, that's old school. <laughs> Yeah, you, you don't want them to think that you're this rich girl. I'm from Haiti, you know? And so I got really, you know, I was like, don't keep telling people my business. And guess what? You can't sell a secret. It's because of him just completely bragging on me all the time. They're like, oh, really? Oh, my gosh, I know a client. And then that was the light bulb, you know? And so co-hosting happens when you express how much you enjoy what it is that you do and you tell it to everyone really mm -hmm. you tell mm -hmm. it to everyone you shout out to the mountains whenever you're interacting with other um environments and they're asking questions you provide value and you share what it is that you're doing you start to become a household name like okay so this is someone who can help me if i ever you know decide to go into this venture and mm -hmm. so that's that's really how it happened it really happened organically i don't have even a landing page for co-hosting, but <laughs> people just happen to know me from, you know, my husband sharing my, putting my business out there and then. Yeah, your success. <laughs> no, that's fantastic yeah. because I think there are a lot of people who uh, have spaces that they'd be willing to host, but they just don't, first of all, they don't know how. 
Uh, they don't know how to get started. Uh, they may not have the time, but they can still benefit from an association with someone or a company like yours and still, you know, make a big chunk of that, that money. It's, it's a, almost a win-win situation. If you find the right person to, to help you, you know, why wouldn't you do that one? That one's like low hanging fruit. I'm, I'm thinking, you know, you're just getting a check at the end of the month. That's a pretty good gig. Good, good, uh -huh. good, good. Okay, so I got to bring us back to... I know. Yeah. I want to grab yeah. my copy too. Okay, what there. chapter are you? Okay. That's, that's, that's how we'll know each other. What chapter is yours? Let's see. I, I just unveiled this because I, I, I didn't, I was, I just took a look at it. So I haven't read anybody's story yet, but I encourage yeah. everybody I'm to watch it. I'm chapter seven. Okay, okay. Go to chapter seven. Check out Rachel and her history. And do you offer tips or what's your, don't tell us all about it, but tell us a little bit about mm -hmm. what your chapter is about. Absolutely. I just kind of walk through my journey and I spoke about a specific guest and just oh. a heartwarming story of what they had been through. And so that's something that I think we often, um, and what I love about the book is we often see Airbnb and the stories on TV and the news. And right. we don't take a step back. Even I didn't know the types of guests that I would have an opportunity to serve, whether it's, you know, you're serving a family that's there for a memorial service. I mean, it's not just fun and games. I mean, you're curating a space that they connect with each other in a most, at the deepest level in mm -hmm in the, a time of need. Absolutely, and absolutely. It, I um, hosted yeah. a guest who was uh, undergoing uh, medical treatment at a hospital and he was able to have his entire family join him as he went through that uh, process over, um, I think he was here for like, three weeks. And so rather than be alone or rather than have to stay at the facility or at another um, similar you know, medical facility, he stayed in, in my home and I uh, had his family here and I swear this will give me goosebumps and I'll start to, you know, tear up. But, you know, when they left, they, they had a big poster that they had done with all their pictures and, and, the, and the person who was ill was in the middle. And it was, I was like, you know what, this, this, this is fantastic. I am so uh, proud and honored to be able to provide a space for that family to have shared that time together. Cause I can imagine you know, I would have wanted something like that um, in my family as well. So it's more than just, you know, the nightly rate. It really is. And, uh, and I tell people who, who, um, who see it as a business um, and strictly a business that it really is um, more than that or can be. Um, but it's also, it can be very lucrative, wouldn't you say? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And that's the win-win, right? You get to do something where you're serving others and then it's creating a life-altering revenue stream. I mean, yes. it changed my life. I've having the opportunity to retire in February from medicine. <laughs> wow. Me. Uh, yeah. So I'm consulting in healthcare right now, but I did retire and it was because of the short-term rentals. So you went from from a half a million dollar in student loan debt to retiring in what? What's the span of time? I know, about eight, eight years or so, yeah. That's fantastic, I love it. It's a short career, but <laughs> get in and get out and start doing something that you really love that is, uh, that is also good to you. I have to yeah. say that, you know, there's, there's a, a bit of uh, stress that goes along with welcoming oh, yeah. any new guests, but nothing, in my opinion at least, nothing compared to that nine to five year after year after year yeah and, and at, at a certain point you wonder is there an end in sight you know and so i really really love what it is that i do and i get to help others to get started themselves which is such a joy and that's a little bit of what i speak about in here because the myth is that you know as a healthcare professional or someone who has a 90 to 5 there's not a way to get in and do it but you explained it earlier pam starting off with having someone to kind of walk side by side with you as a co-host, I think that's a great way to start until you're ready to take the reins for yourself, but that's a great way to start. So tell everybody how you serve uh, more people on a bigger level. I know you've got uh, your academy, so talk about that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And so 
Um, a couple, well, last year, actually, as uh, my colleagues were getting interested in short term rental and they saw what I was doing, they asked me, well, can you teach us how to do this? And I bet they did. Sure. <laughs> sure, I was happy to do so. And that really developed into a, a digital course, uh, one where I was able to share with them, other pharmacists, primarily and medical mm -hmm. professionals, how to uh, launch your first short term rental. And the beauty about um, you know, the luxury short-term rentals is all you need is one or two to be wildly profitable. You don't necessarily need, you know, dozens and dozens. Exactly. Which is, yeah, which is in line with, you know, their lifestyles. A lot of them have, like me, my whole husband, two or three kids, some dogs. And so you're really, really busy and you're working all these shifts. So one or two is what, you know, I recommend for you to be wildly profitable. You don't have to go all out. And so that's pretty much my platform. I, I've been sharing there. I share on a weekly uh, live Facebook group. I do some training there. And we have a higher tier, higher level mastermind as well, uh, where those who want that one-on-one -on -one time, everything from uh, understanding where to buy properties mm -hmm. to um, which realtors to connect with mm -hmm. to get those properties to which lenders to get the funding, the types of funding. I, I like putting only 10% down. That's my model. Um, okay. I'm not a financial advisor, so it may not be a good fit for everyone, but it's worked for me. And that's, you know, I shared full transparency on that to getting, you know, I have a designer on board who helps uh, design properties. She's flown to Seattle and North Carolina to help my students design. Fantastic. Set up their properties. and. And then we launch, we launch, and then what happens next is guest communication. Let's troubleshoot something. That's where the action happens. I, a lot of people, Pam, I think, think it's all about the acquisition, right? But it's not. Mm. The real work. No, 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 I agree. Once, mm -hmm, once those heads start hitting those beds, that's where the real work happens, navigating those systems. And, you know, with the ever-changing ecosystem of Airbnb Verbal, you need to be on top of it to make sure that, you know, you continue to be um, sustainable and profitable. Yeah, yeah. Well, I have to say, um, as a life, my whole career, I've been a realtor. So to hear you <laughs> oh. shout out realtors a couple of different times, oh. I'm like, hey. Yes. So, so thanks for that. We, you know, I, I feel like we don't get enough recognition, quite no. frankly. But, you know, I will tell anybody who is a realtor or who knows a realtor uh, in this space, you know, hit them up, let them know. There is a, a lot of the skills that realtors bring to their clients are very transformable, I guess, uh, to hosting and, and, and helping other people host. So I could probably talk to you all day about this. I know. I, um, and I look forward to that. I'm going to see you in Nashville. Yeah. And, uh, and we're going to take some time and, uh, and talk some more. I've enjoyed uh, hearing your story. I hope everybody else has. And um, check you out, Chapter 7, everybody else. <laughs> get this book and, and, and take care and, and read through about all these hosts and all their unbelievable stories because they're uh, very inspiring and they're very different. Nobody comes to this in the same way. That's what's so cool. Um, so I hope maybe if you're, if you're reading this, you get this book, you see yourself in one of these chapters and you take the step, take the next step. Rachel can help you. I'll help you. you can do it. <laughs> Rachel, how can everybody reach you? Oh, go to rachelbnb.com. If you go to rachel, R-A-C-H-E-L, bnb.com, you'll get looped into my Facebook group tonight. We're actually interviewing the um, founder of Peerspace, oh, which cool. is, a, yeah, that daytime oh. short-term rental for photo shoots, small events. So, yeah, every week we have a little training. That. So we'll be asking him questions on which markets is most prevalent and it's not going to be everywhere, but I think it's yeah. worthwhile to have that conversation to see if your property would qualify or yeah, would make a no. good content. I've done that several different times and it's, yeah. it's really a nice way to do business because, uh, you know, they're daytime shoots for the most part. So the yeah. guests are not staying overnight. Um, mm -hmm. They're, they're paying, you know, they don't argue about the price, at least in my experience. Uh, they've been very good to the properties. There's a, a special um, lease agreement and insurance that goes along with them. And I've had a couple of different productions, uh, a documentary that's coming out this fall and uh, in a, in a um, recurring television show and a couple of other ones. I like that one. We should talk about that more because yeah. more people really if you have a property, it doesn't just to have, don't think of it in just uh, the traditional terms. Think of it a little bit out of the box. 
get up and over that can go that can be your niche you know you don't maybe you don't do regular guests on a on an ongoing basis you just set up a peer space kind of situation and you just do productions it's a good way <laughs> first things could happen Rachel, thank you. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. I will see you in Nashville. We'll grab a cocktail or coffee and, yes. uh, and hang out. And everybody else, one more time, one last time, Hospitable Hosts. It's on Amazon. Uh, yay. I will uh, look forward to seeing you again. Thank you again for your time today. Thank you so much for having me. Bye-bye, everybody. Hi, I'm Pam Holt. How are you? Today is an exciting day. It's actually day two of a very special week. This week is the launch of the Hospitable Host Collaborative Book Project. I'm so excited to be a part of this with 40 of my closest friends now uh, who are all hosts from all over the world. Uh, they have come together to tell their inspiring stories of how they get started and how they run their businesses. So if you're interested, and you should be, uh, you can pick up a copy of your own on uh, Amazon, amazon.com. We're right there. We're trending at number one after just one day of being on, uh, being available in the U.S. at least. Uh, we are right up there in several different categories, um, and so you'll find us. I'm chapter 24. I'm excited to get reading and, uh, and read all the insights that all these other fabulous hosts have to offer. Uh, but beyond that, today I'm going to be joined by one of the authors here, uh, Dr. Rachel Gainsborough. I'm going to try to find her because I couldn't find her before. Let me see. 